Hello, welcome back. It has been a really long time since I did a video. I feel like I'm a bit rusty, but yeah, I've basically been trying to wrangle my baby and I haven't had much time for editing videos and uploading content, but I have a rare day where Jack is working from home and River is asleep in the carrier. So I have some time to film some content. And yeah, I bought these vases and I'm going to make them into terrariums. And I thought you guys might like to see how it's done. So yeah, bear with me if I'm a bit rusty at this. Let's, let's just get going. I will show you now what you need. So I am going to plant up these guys. Let's have a look. So this one is like a science beakery sort of one i got they're all from h&m home actually i recently bought them there couldn't help myself had to get three nice little smoky glass one and a kind of more tapered uh base one but basically i am going to plant these guys up with some phytonia which i have here really pretty one and i've got a really bright kind of speckledy white one there and then I've got various different ferns and a kentia palm because these are really nice and easy to split off individually and pop in so yeah I'm gonna mix these into these and uh, show you how I do it so first things first these are the kind of tools and kind of materials I'll be using so just for the soil a little spoon and um, these are aquarium tools and um, there are little tweezers to help me get down into here scissors for trimming foliage and there are some whoops there are some kind of bent tipped tweezers as well and a little scraper for moving soil and substrate around so I'm going to be using those to move stuff around and help me get the plants in and secure them in. What I'm going to plant them in, I'm going to line the bottom with some gravel. This is aquarium gravel, but it's quite large. I can share, whoops, share the link for these below um, in the description. But then I have a mix of normal compost, like a potting mix, John Inner's number two, horticultural sand and some horticultural grit in there. This compost is kind of like a bark, grit, coconut core kind of mix. So they're, they're kind of different, doesn't really matter which one you use. And then I've got various different types of soil topping. So I've got this fine substrate and I've got a slightly chunkier one but you can use sand or decorative coloured pebbles or anything really because these are going to be just for a little bit of decoration and then an important layer within them to help them stay nice and clean and help the filtration of the kind of water and the soil is some activated charcoal so this is literally like it says supposed to be to replace cartridges in a cooker hood but basically it's all the same it's just activated charcoal and this wasn't very expensive it's in kind of pellet form but you can get it ground as well so yeah that's basically what you'll need vessel nice long tools to help you work some nice plants that like humidity and like to be moist succulents and cacti do not work in this kind of humid kind of closed neck terrarium they like open bowls basically with lots of air and dry air got lots of succulents and cacti over there and yes gravel for the base toppings to make it look pretty and some kind of soil and charcoal and then a surface to kind of work on so you don't get it everywhere so let's get started so i'm gonna start with this guy he is the biggest of them and we'll see how it goes i'm actually not gonna plant up all three on camera because that would be the longest YouTube video ever. So um, I'm just gonna go with this one to show you. But essentially, the first thing you need to do is fill the base with some stones for drainage. I've got the big aquarium stones that I showed you before. I'm gonna turn it on its side and stick my hand in so I don't pull them in and smash the vase. I mean, not that I wouldn't make good YouTube content. So you need a good layer. Um, on the bottom, but you don't want your soil um, and your stones and your substrate mix to be too tall because otherwise there won't be space for your foliage to grow. So a good layer, but you know, not too much. Don't really do it. Let's have a look. 
That'll be enough. So on top of that, we need to put our activated charcoal that acts as a filter to help keep the soil nice and healthy. You don't need a ton, but again, a couple of scoops just to help filter out the water. I mentioned it a minute ago, but these are the pellet type of my activated charcoal, but you can get it as like a little fine grit or powder as well. I am going to use this guy too. Move some of that around, even it out so it's got a nice little layer there. Perfect. And now to start adding soil. Really is quite easy. So I am going to add some of this one first. This is the potting compost mix that I made. This one I just made myself with, like I said, John in his number two, some horticultural sharp sand and some horticultural grit. Also, while we're here, loads and loads of you have asked whether I'm going to do an updated houseplant tour, and the answer is yes. I am going to do one of those. I need to tidy the rest of the house first. That's why I haven't got around to it, because juggling a baby and trying to keep the house tidy is an impossible task. But yeah, it is coming. I am going to do that. I know you guys want it. We've got lots of new plants. The house has changed quite a lot since we last did it. We've got a new kitchen and a new bathroom and what was the spare bedroom is now River's bedroom and that's full of plants too. So yeah, hopefully it'll be interesting to see an update because the last one I filmed was like, what, 18 months ago, two years ago maybe, which is mad. So I'm just going to use this aquarium tool that's like a little scraper to even my soil out, check how much I've got. Like I said, I don't want a huge, thick load of soil because these guys don't have super deep roots. But obviously I do need enough to actually plant them in. So I'm gonna put a bit more in. If you're feeling fancy, you can kind of create like a little slope of soil. It doesn't have to be just a flat level. You can add in like layers of sand and things like that to make it kind of look a bit cool. But I'm just going for a basic one because I want the focus to be on the plants because that's what I'm into. You can also use like a wine bottle cork on a skewer to like poke the soil down and pat it down a bit. That's actually quite useful. Should have had one of those but don't really drink any wine and didn't think to, to get one before I started uh, getting ready to film. Okay, so that should be enough for that soil. I am actually going to use this as well. This is the kind of coconut core lighter mix. But for the mo, I'm gonna get my plants ready. Right, what am I gonna put in this one? Definitely some of this guy. So it's gonna get a bit messy here. I picked these up just from my local garden center. All of them, in fact, it's quite nice. They were like £2.50 a plant. So not exactly pricey when you consider you can split them all out and make them into multiple little plants. Each one of these stems that you can see of the palm is its own separate plant. So you can separate these out completely and pop them in. So I'm just going to really gently separate them. I don't want to damage the nice little delicate roots they've got. Just pop this guy in. I can. I watered these guys a couple of days ago, so the soil's quite moist. Probably shouldn't have done that. Probably should have let them get a bit drier so it was easier to pull them apart. One, two, that guy is another two. So yeah, one pot for £2.49 has produced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen separate plants, which isn't bad. I'm just gonna put all this excess soil in here out of the way. What else? It's nice to have different sized plants to kind of create different levels. So I've got some tall ones and some little shorties. Again, you can separate out these ferns quite easily. You can kind of just 
separate them at the root and ease them apart. I don't know if you can kind of see, but you can kind of grab them at the base and just pull them apart and then divide it. So I'm going to use that and make two. I might put one of these in as well. So any like dead or sad looking foliage, crispy leaves, browning bits, make sure you take those off because you don't want to introduce any dead bits into your terrarium. You want to choose nice healthy pieces of your plants. This guy I can also split. Helps to really loosen the soil around the roots so you can get the roots as clean as possible and then it makes it easier to split your plants up. There we go. Okay, so let's start potting. I made an absolute mess here. Should have brought something to clean my hands. I'm gonna go use something to clean my hands now. Okay, so move this out the way. Move my plants to one side. Try not to knock on the floor. That's probably what I'll do. I'm going to use my little tweezers. I'm going to use the ones with the bent tip. And make a little hole where I want my plant to be. I might actually use the scrapey tool to do that. Put a bit more soil in. We're going to go with some of this one. Basically, you want to be as gentle with the roots as you can. Make a little hole. Pop your little fella in. Hold it nice and firm. So what I'm doing now is just kind of moving the soil around and positioning it in around my little, little plant pal there just to make sure that he's sturdy and in and supported. It's important to position your plants so that the foliage isn't pressing against the glass so they have room to grow. So you want to kind of keep your planting towards the middle if you can. One little guy fell on my lap so I'm going to pop him in as well. I'm going to keep these guys up at the back because they're going to be the tall foliage and then I'm going to put the little Fittonias down at the front. This is where the cork little dabber would come in very handy. This guy doesn't want to stand up. Helps if you curl the roots kind of around the plant a little bit and hold it by that to pop it in. And like I said, you can use a second pair to guide the top of the tweezers if it's easier. So that way the roots stay in a neat little ball and you can pop them in and then hold it in place, poke around, get your roots down. Add a bit more soil. Gonna get the little scratchy poker thing. There we are. Right, so they're in at the back. Just gonna add a bit more soil. Here's a bit fiddly, admittedly. Then I'm going to put a little bit of some maidenhair fern in. Again, I'm going to try and keep the neat, the root ball neat and grab that with the tweezers. I'm going to poke a little hole. Then we get my little fern by the root and pop him in. So, he's in. That was a lot easier than the Kentia palm. Um, he had shorter roots though. So I'm going to pat him down, make 
sure things all in nicely. And then in the front here, I'm going to put a little Fitonia. I'm going to use the pinky one. Once again, wrapping up the root ball, keeping it nice and tight, finding where I'm going to pop it, and making a little hole. Ease the foliage in so I'm not breaking any of the nice leaves as I pop it in. And I'm just lowering it in. This was two separate little plants, so I'm going to do a bit of twiddling around and adding a little bit of extra soil in. It can be useful as well to have a little soft paintbrush um, to help if you do accidentally pour a whole load of soil um, on top of your newly popped in plants. Yeah, it can help to have a little paintbrush to kind of just brush the soil away from the leaves um, gently, because obviously you can't get your hands in here very easily. Or I can't, so, and I've got pretty small hands, so most people, I think, would find it a bit of a challenge. So I'm just patting the soil down and around my little Fitonia and positioning him. I'm going to add a bit more soil in. So I've discovered I can fit my hand in here and it does make things a bit easier without the uh, aforementioned cork poker. But yeah, I'm just going to press the soil down. If you can get your hand in, great. If you can't, continue with tools. I should have caveated this before, shouldn't I, I guess, with the fact that I'm definitely not a trained gardener. I just really like houseplants. And I made one of these a couple of years ago, I think, and it's still doing really well. So I thought, why not have a go and make another one? Because, like I said, really like houseplants. I tend to be able to keep them alive relatively well. So, and yeah, these are really, really pretty to look at. And because they are moisture-loving, shade-loving plants, and because they're in a nice kind of close net vessel, they don't need a huge amount of specialist care and attention like they would if you had ferns just in a pot in the open. Because with central heating and everything like that over here in the winter in the UK, all these kind of humidity loving plants like ferns and phytonia and stuff like that don't really like that. I'm not big fans of a uh, central heated house. So now once all your plants are in and you're kind of happy with the positioning then you want to spend a little bit of time prettifying. So adding your top dressings, making sure that your plants sit nicely. Do you want to trim off any leaves that are kind of pushing against the sides or getting in the way? And basically, yeah, do the nice bit, make it look good. I have a little kind of wispy bit of fern that doesn't look too happy, so I'm going to use these little kind of bent end scissors and just chop that bit, whoop, chop that bit off and pop it out. So chopped it off, grab it with my tongs, and lift that bit out. So I'm going to add in. A little bit of this. You can also use little kind of long handled teaspoons like you use to make cocktails. Those are quite good at this point when you're dressing the soil if you're wanting to put stones in in a specific area. Or a little bit of sand, something like that. These guys I'm using have got a quite light colour so they look really nice in contrast to the dark soil and the green foliage. But like I said, you could go super crazy and literally use multicoloured aquarium gravel or kind of stones you found on the beach or add in little crystals, stuff like that. You can, yeah, go to town basically and uh, design it however you like. Go super fancy pants. I'm gonna add in a little bit of the really fine soil, really fine stones as well. A little sprinkling over here and pop some up the back. Didn't put things in particularly clever containers for this, making a bit of a mess. But like I said, not a pro. Just having a bash at this because it's fun. And I like to think anyone can do it, so I'm showing you how. 
But yeah, if you're a gardener or a horticulturalist, like a proper legit one, and you're watching this and it's making you cringe, then I am very sorry. <laughs> very sorry. But hey, it's nice to encourage other people to have plants, right? Then I might actually get some of that gravel I put in the base um, and put that on the top. So yeah, I'm going to put some of the slightly larger gravel in as well um, because it looks quite nice and decorative. If you're really finickety like me, you can kind of pick out the nice stones and leave the not so nice ones. <laughs> It's always good as well to keep in mind where the front of your display is and kind of dress it from that angle rather than just kind of going hog wild. Just have some kind of front end in mind so that you can make it look pretty. But yeah, it looks nice if you have, or generally if you have like kind of a mixture of different soil toppings, I think. Fine sands or gravels and some chunkier bits too. It just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at, like a little tiny forest or something, something cute. I haven't got a brain, I've still got baby brain. It's a real thing, guys. I find myself forgetting words, like really easy words, 99% of the time, and people keep telling me it's not going to come back. So that's, that's worrying, to say the least. Okay. So I think we're just about done. You can hear weird noises in the background, like slobbery licking noises. It's my Persian cat. He is grooming himself in the background. Bless him. So yeah, that's what those weird noises are. If you can hear them, it's not me. Delightful Momo, thank you for that. So I'm just doing a last minute bit of positioning, making sure I'm patting down the soil so everybody is in nice and firmly. One pesky little Kentia Palm does not want to play ball. I'm trying to angle everybody so that they point inwards and therefore don't grow just against the sides. Pretty happy with that. Might stick another little bit of a different fern down the back, you know. So there you are. Done. And I will show you it now. Ta-da! This is when I drop it on the table and smash it. There you go. There he is. pretty pleased with that. And the last thing that you need to do once you're all planted up is water it. I have two different things I like to water my kind of terrariums and hard to get to plants with. One is this little squeezy bottle with a tiny squirty spout which is really useful. You just give it a squeeze like this and then you can angle the water flow in whichever direction you like. I'm trying to moisten the soil Mostly, it doesn't need a lot, but yeah, you can use this or one of these. This is a Hawes brass watering can. It's like a little spritzer. So this is good for kind of creating a fine mist. It's kind of easier though when you're spraying upright plants. So like literally just an old spray bottle from cosmetics would probably work a little bit better for spritzing these guys than that. But yeah, give it a good water to help your plants settle in. And then just kind of keep an eye on it really. When it's looking a little bit dry, spritz them or add some more, but they're not very high maintenance really. Because like I said, the charcoal helps filter the soil. Water kind of condenses or, or stays quite nicely inside the terrarium because it isn't a big old normal open pot and so these guys tend to tend to be pretty happy so you have it he's all planted up looking pretty good there he is Sorry about the glare from the windows, but there you have it, a very amateur but certainly very doable at home little tutorial on how to make a little fern terrarium. I hope you enjoyed it. 
<laughs> if you didn't, sorry about that. But yeah, I'm gonna carry on now and pot up the other two terrariums with all the other plants that I have, then clear up this mess and um, hopefully get this edited and uploaded to YouTubes. So if you enjoyed this video, you can check out tons of my other plant-based videos over on my channel. At the end, there'll be a little subscribe button. It'll be ace if you could subscribe. But yeah, do hit like, do comment, do ask me any questions and I'll do my best to help. But until next time, hopefully the houseplant tour, have a good one.